supposedly we have to pay a toll for the Golden Gate Bridge. Did you did you figure it out? No, they're closed. They're closed. They're uh, this one. They're closed. Play Donnie record. Good morning, guys. It is Monday the 26th. Christmas was yesterday. We are getting the car, and I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna do today. Probably gonna eat some more. I'm pretty sure that today we're definitely gonna see the Golden Gate Bridge, which is something that you have to do when you're here. Other than that, we don't have a definitive plan, but we will figure it out. We're gonna go one mile and then we're gonna take a right onto Franklin Street. Go to Lombard Street. Lombard? Take, take a left in one mile. Take a left, right? It is a bridge and only a bridge. I've seen many bridges, driven on many bridges, even walked on many bridges. But many bridges don't look like this one. In fact, they don't come close. Of the many things I have seen people make, this one, this bridge, is the most beautiful. These days you can't imagine San Francisco without the Golden Gate Bridge. However, before its development there was a lot of opposition to its construction. Some said it would be too expensive, others too dangerous. And some said the idea of a bridge over San Francisco's Golden Gate would be straight up ugly. Couldn't have asked for more beautiful weather right now. It is bright. Blue skies, better than yesterday. Anyway, we're gonna stop, take some pictures. You know, the typical San Francisco tourist. One of those opponents was well-known photographer and environmentalist Ansel Adams. His photo titled, Golden Gate Before the Bridge, was taken on the evening before building began. It is a reflective reminder of what the area looked like and how we as people can alter the landscape. It would never look the same, again. However, it was the chief engineer Joseph Strauss who boastfully had the last laugh. After the bridge was completed and had received world-renowned praise, he said this, the Golden Gate Bridge, the bridge which could not and should not be built, which the War Department would not permit which the rocky foundation of the pier base would not support, which would have no traffic to justify it, which would ruin the beauty of the Golden Gate, which could not be completed within my cost estimate of $27,165,000, stands before you all in its majestic splendor in complete refutation of every attack made upon it. Now that is what I call a mic drop. Today it is one of the world's iconic monuments, and people from all over the world come to see it for themselves. Though even in its beauty, the bridge holds a dark secret. 
It is, in fact, the top suicide location in the world. It is said that someone jumps to their death once every two to three weeks. Those who do jump will hit the water at about 75 miles per hour. So it's been a good morning so far. You know, San Francisco is kind of known as like the most picturesque city in America. And just so far, I can see why. There's like a viewpoint everywhere. There's like, no matter where you look, there's a good place to take a picture. <laughs> you gotta check out the guys. Right now they are, they're selfie whores. They are taking as many selfies as they can in front of the San Francisco skyline. <laughs> Check it out. Not many places will stop us from a good meal, but this place did. The Palace of Fine Arts. This was not on today's itinerary, but we saw it from outside our car windows and evidently had to stop. I'll save you all the great details, just know it's worth your time. It was definitely worth ours. made it to the Thai restaurant. Mm. Oh, it's good. I'm so hungry. I've met a few people who don't like Thai food. Usually they spat something along the lines of, I don't like spicy food. Yes, some dishes use spice a lot more liberally, but to generalize the cuisine as only spicy is to simply ignore some of the finer flavors it offers. Either way, in America, most Thai restaurants are more conservative on the chilies. We hit up Thai House Express in San Francisco's Castro District. I enjoyed this meal. There was this mystery soup of beef cuts, meatballs, and Chinese broccoli, followed by their dry version of pork stew. You can also order this in a soup form. Of course we had to order the pad thai, this one with crab meat. But my favorite was the spicy chicharron. There's a little bit of UFC in each bite, but they balanced it nicely with a sweet counterpart. There's definitely a kick there, but you get that sweetness and then the spiciness. Mm -hmm. Keep it right. That's killer, that is really, really good. Don't be afraid to try it. More so, don't be afraid of the spice. Go all in. Oh Guys, God, I would really God, recommend God, this spot. Really good Thai food. Oh. Castro Street, Thai House Express. Get it. We're on our way to Muir Woods, which I believe is a redwood forest just north of San Francisco. You guys still hungry? Are you kidding? <laughs> I wanna throw out. <laughs> you guys see that truck right <laughs> behind me? How do I show it? Right there. That truck is a fruit truck. Yeah. They sell pistachios. We're gonna get some stuff.
woods is an enchanting place. It is a humbling place. You can't come through here without some appreciation for our existence in the world. The redwoods stretch high, their bark coated in green moss, and by the hundreds they stand like guards protecting the California coast. It is an exceptional area, and worth an escape from San Francisco's frantic pace. And guys, we're coming up on a tree that is covered. And I don't know if it's lichen or moss, but it is so cool. Check this out. This tree is awesome. The forest is named after Scottish-American naturalist John Muir. He was a man of the outdoors, a lifelong wanderer, and an excellent writer. His childhood was spent in Scotland before his family moved to Wisconsin and started farming. It was his early days in Wisconsin that many say led him to being a lifelong warrior for nature conservation. He once wrote, I left the University of Wisconsin for the University of Wilderness. His life eventually brought him to California, and it was a camping trip in Yosemite with President Theodore Roosevelt that may have been the most important factor to the creation of the national park system. After that trip, Roosevelt signed into existence five national parks and 18 national monuments. In 1908, he named these woods after John Muir, that Scottish Wisconsin boy who had a love for the outdoors. All right, guys, we are just finishing it up. I would highly, highly recommend this place. It is packed today. Like I said, I think that's because of the holidays, but Lex liked it, I liked it. And nope, Lex friend, he didn't want to go inside, so he missed out. He's actually sleeping in the car right now. Shh.